Hey everybody, welcome back to Scribbles with Jonathan. My name is Jonathan Rector. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And uh, enough of that plugging stuff. Uh, what I wanted to do was a quick video of uh, of this right here. Kind of, I know some people talk about this. Uh, most of you probably know about it, and if not, uh, hopefully you learn something from it. But um, not all of us like to work 100% digitally. Uh, back in the day, I used to just crack open the the artboard or the Bristol, whatever it was, grab the pencils, the, the whatever inking tool you got, and just kind of got to work right there. I do think you're missing out a little bit um, by not incorporating a little bit of digital work, just just a little bit. And the reason for that is um, you miss out on doing things like uh, like this. Um, what this will be, really quickly, is I've already done this. This is a, a rough drawing. Um, kind of kind of added a little bit more detail in here than than I normally would have in a rough drawing, but. I have this file here, and what I'm going to do is show you how to get it prepared, printed, and then what I would do from that stage to actually bring it onto Bristol and get it all sexy and all finished up. Uh, this is a commission for somebody. Um, it's uh, the classic Batgirl, and she's riding her little Bat motorcycle, and I just threw that cheesy explosion in the background. Um, but this here is a, a file. Now, I, I'll show you guys this too, um, just so you guys can see the settings I'm using. Um, image, where are we going here? Image, da, 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 da. image size, there we go, sorry. Uh, so you can see what I'm looking at. This is a 300 dpi image. Uh, the width is all there, the height, you can pause the video to check that all out. But uh, what that is, is that simulates an 11 by 17 piece of Bristol. And if I turn off all the art here, um, you guys can see this is, I, I've shown this before, this is my um, kind of like artboard already done up here, it's just on a template layer. And this first line here, this first dotted line, everything inside this box is the live area. Um, the second line here is where it's going to get cut or cropped right here, you can see on there. That's where is if you, imagine you had like a giant blade and right straight down this crop line is where you would cut, right down that crop line is where you would cut. And that's for when it goes to print, okay? Um, so yeah, um, normally it's 10 by 15 is what uh, most printers print at, the, the area that'll actually get printed on. Uh, however, we don't need to know all that information. What we need to know is once we have our art, does it actually fit where we want it to fit? And since I've drawn it digitally, uh, I know that it will, according to what I would like it to do. Now, the whole reason why I said you're missing out if you don't do this kind of thing is, let me open this up here. I, I, I'll apologize right now. I don't know what's in all of these layers. Um, but we're just going to go through it and see. I have been merging layers here and there, so uh, some layers aren't don't have much of anything. But... Uh, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is uh, a motorcycle that I just brought in from Google SketchUp. I found an angle that I liked. I did erase a little bit because I had to add parts of her actual bike on there. Um, so I just sketched it in and uh, added some background elements and stuff like that. But here she is just over top of it. Now, what's really cool is because let's say ultimately, uh, you know, when all this is said and done, I don't like that. It's too, it's too uh, small. Maybe I want it zoomed in or something. Uh, you can do all sorts of things, you know, like I could quickly just press a button and flip it uh, once Photoshop wants to kick in. And maybe that's the angle I want to go. Maybe I want it to look this way, you know. And once I print it out, I'm good to go. If I were to do this traditionally, like just grab that paper like I told you guys and just start hammering it out, you might come across those things where, you know, you might not be able to, you know, you might have wanted it to go the other way. Um, I can transform it, you know, I can rotate it. I can move the image around where I want. Maybe I want her up like this, you know, a little bit more action. I'll be honest with you guys. I think this actually looks a little bit better like that. Get more of her cape in there, but, you know, what are you going to do? So let's say <laughs> this is what we're going to go with. The next thing you would do is if you hold Control-R, you get these rulers up here. And Control, uh, I'm not even, I think it's a semicolon button. It's right on the right-hand side of the letter L. You'll get these guides in here. And these blue lines you probably won't have unless you've already... Uh, got it for your document. But what you want to do is get it so that you're clicking on the ruler up at the top here and dragging it down halfway through the image. So uh, sometimes it'll actually click right to the middle. Uh, there we go. Um, if it's not clicking, make sure you got it on a, on a background like this. I have it for the white paper, you know, just to simulate that, but you might have something that's just, you know, a white fill for the, the uh, paper. Um, if you go to I just want to make sure I'm looking at a view at the top of your menu there. Um, and I apologize, you guys can't see this. It'll say snap near the bottom. There's also something that says snap to. When you click snap to, make sure, you, like what I have is guides, layers, and document bounds. Document bounds is the one you're going to want. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the one you're going to want so that you can make sure you can get it in half like that. Uh, 
Now the next step you do here is you can turn off your rulers, you don't really need that. Uh, press M for your marquee tool. Make sure that it's actually a uh, rectangle. Um, before we do that, I apologize, I keep jumping around on stages. Uh, select the whole thing, press Control A, you'll see you get like these dancing ants or marching ants, some people call them. It's like a selection on the whole thing. Now go up to Edit, Copy Merged, and then Edit Paste. Um, what's that, what that's going to do is, just so you can see it, it's going to make a new layer. Now if I turn off um, all the other layers, I apologize, it's putting everything in everywhere. Uh, layer Order Paste. Okay, uh, Can we get it above it? There we go. So if I turn off all the other layers, this layer is actually, it copies everything that's visible onto its own. So that way I still have like a master here that I can manipulate and the other ones if I needed to adjust. So make sure that's selected. Press M again to grab your marquee tool and just click somewhere in the gray here and what you're going to do is get it to snap there on one half. What we're doing is we're basically cutting the image up so that you can print from a regular printer. You don't need some elaborate 11 by 17 huge monster uh, printer. What we're going to do is print this from like a traditional normal 8.5 by 11 printer, okay? So you select one, go up to Edit Copy. Again, you could do Copy Merged if you like that. Um, let me just move my document over here so you guys can see it. Now go over to File, New, and you'll notice right away that the dimensions are going to be a little bit different. It's going to look, start looking like a rectangle. Now what this actually is, is this is an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And what we're doing is we're making two of them because 8.5 by 11 times 2 on each side is 11 by 17. So again, you can just click this marquee tool and just drag it down. It'll snap right in there. Or if you want, you can click down at the bottom and, uh, you know, we'll do that right now just so you can see it there. And then control copy. Again, file new and paste. And that's basically it. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to print it out. And through the, the miracle <laughs> of technology here, uh, I'm going to hook up my webcam. Hopefully this will all work out. And uh, we're going to go step by step and go to the next step, okay? So your video should pause right now, and uh, hopefully this works out. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Um, I already did this, and I guess it didn't save. So round two. Um, we have our two pieces of paper that printed out. And I had already jumped up a, a step here. As you notice, there's like this white margin that prints along the top and on all the sides. What you're going to do is just cut the part that merges with the other piece of paper. Um, so it might look something like this at first. This is where you would grab, uh, literally, these are the tools, <laughs> a ruler, scissors, and a friggin' pencil or pen, whatever you got. All you got to do, slap the ruler up on that guy, line her up. You don't got to be too precious with it. This is just for roughs. And draw your line right across. And uh, get your scissors and just snip, snip, snip all the way across. And the next thing you're going to do, don't, you don't have to do them on both sides of the pages. Just pick one of the papers. It's not, not a big deal. Then what you would do is the side that you did cut, you just lay it over top. Now you're going to find it doesn't line up 100%. There are things that are a little off. Exact lines like in this bike. They might line up, but then you look over here and, whoa, what's happening? What's happening there? And that could be uh, a bunch of different things. Your paper could have printed on a tilt, on a slant, um, lots of things. And I'll be honest with you guys and girls, I don't know all the technical mumbo-jumbo with all that stuff, so it could be a bunch of things. But once you have that, next thing you're going to do is uh, tape it, preferably on the back or the front, whichever you got. Uh, I actually don't have tape, so I'm going to have to staple it. And then what you would do is you take this, and you would tape it, don't staple it, tape it onto an 11 by 17 piece of Bristol. And then if you have access to a light table, you're good to go. If you don't have access to a light table, you can get totally cheap. Um, just open the blinds, pull the blinds up on your window, and put this up in front of a window during the daytime, and you'll have light shining through. And what you're going to do is just grab your pencil and just start redrawing it, basically, you know, picking the lines that you like. Keep it loose, keep it sketchy. Um, it's not a tight drawing. Okay, I mean, you could necessarily go from here to a tight drawing, but myself, I don't like working all the time at a light box. It actually bugs me. So uh, I'll show you how rough the art is that I'm going to take from this into the rough stage. Okay, so uh, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, and we're back. Um, so this is, uh, this is what it looks like here. I apologize for the camera set up here. i got to go through some cables. Uh, just bend the paper. Hope the camera's not dancing too much, but uh, yeah, so you can see 
basically what the liner looks like. It's pretty tight, you know. Um, from here, what I'm going to do, i just go down to the bike or whatever. Uh, from here, what I'm going to do is uh, spend the next, you know, however long it's going to take. This is just pencils, but uh, you could totally go to inks from here. But, um, yeah, go right into tight inks, grab my eraser, tighten some things up, make sure some of these lines are a little bit straighter. Um, let me just zoom in a little bit more here. Oops. So you can see, like, the lines are pretty wavy. Um, I didn't just draw them. I kind of petted them. I know a lot of people, they'll talk about, uh, you know, have confidence in your lines and stuff. But when I was on here, I was, you know, like this. That was how I was doing on my lines. It was like this, like this kind of controlled, jaggy movement. Be light with it. Make, make it so that you, you're able to go back in an erase, fix, and change, and always be able to add things at any moment. Uh, that's the last thing you want to do is not be able to ever go back and fix something. And uh, the other thing, too, that I should note is what's uh, really awesome about having this guy still out on the side is I kind of had an idea where I wanted the shadows to go, but it's nothing final. Um, sometimes what I would do is I would just have it nice, you know, not nice, but like, open liner kind of like this and then after I've done transferring it I grab like a sharpie marker or something or a nice big fat marker and just kind of start throwing down black um, what it does is it lets you see what the image can potentially look like now without having to spend a lot of time erasing and stuff so thank you so much for watching I know this is a little bit more of like a hiccup thing you know I was going back and forth doing a little bit uh, digital and throwing it down here but I just want to wrap up and say if you even if you have MS Paint something uh, Photoshop if you're able to use I know I, that's what I started with but if you've got something that you can um, manipulate photos in your drawing that way when you print it out it gives you a guide to draw from um, I think you know you I don't want to say it'll necessarily give you some speed but uh, you know it's it's a little give and take for both sides of the the coin there so that you can do some adjustments and some things like this bike uh, it was just popped in. I had to do some adjustments. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it saved quite a bit of time, you know. And uh, in the world of comics, the more volume you can crank out, the better. Uh, but it, you just got to make sure it's, <laughs> it's at least getting some sort of quality that makes you happy with it. But anyway, experiment with it. You don't need some expensive tools or anything. Literally a printer. The most expensive thing in this entire process was probably Photoshop. So you can get some, like, Manga Studio that's real cheap. You, you, there, there's tools out there to be able to do this. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in this stuff. I w if, if you are, I can do a, a more in-depth breakdown of the process as well. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. Thanks for all the new subscribers. And um, please, if you're watching and you uh, enjoyed the video, please subscribe, share the video. All that stuff would be fantastic. And, uh, and thank you so much. So, again, keep reading comics. Keep making comics. Talk to you next week. Take care.